Registered Phenomena Code 602 Object Class Beta White Hazard Types Organic Grouped Contact Sensory Containment Protocols As RPC-602 is only dangerous to humans when ingested, and its ability to generate RPC-602-2 can lead to the exponential spread of RPC-602-1 over theoretically international distances. Containment of the anomaly is focused on reducing the risk of the spread of RPC-602-2. RPC-602 is contained in a standard research division airtight pressure vessel, enclosed within a concrete plug on an area empty ground 3 km outside of Site-279. RPC-602 is surrounded by an extension of the Site-279 perimeter fence, creating a safe radius of 35 km around it. The fencing is topped with razor wire and security cameras. Should any unauthorized personnel attempt to breach its perimeter, they are to be apprehended and amnesticized by site security staff. To minimize the risk of the creation of RPC-602-2 instances, Site-279's cafeterias and catering facilities are forbidden from producing any foodstuff which includes jams, fruit, or vegetable preserves, or products made from boiled fruits or vegetables. Carrying such foodstuffs on the Site-279 for any purpose is an offense punishable by docking of pay and revocation of vacation time. Personnel on Site-279 who experience RPC-602-1 at any time must report such experience to their supervisors. The site will subsequently be locked down and swept for any possible instances of RPC-602-2. RPC-602-2 instances are to be destroyed via incineration whenever feasible. Note, since RPC-602's reclassification as TBA-NERGAL, all TBA-related containment protocols are in effect. For further information, consult pamphlet CTBA-01, Continental Apocalypse, Transcendental Breakfast Anomalies and You, available at your home site's OAS Information Retrieval Desk. RPC-602 is an anomalous fruit preserve which demonstrates mimetic properties. RPC-602 consists of 257 milliliters of fruit preserve composed from mundane cane sugar and a fruiting berry believed to be a hitherto undiscovered heirloom variety of Fragaria vesca. The Wild Strawberry Amino acid dating of samples of RPC-602 indicate that it is on the order of 25,000 years old. Despite the jammed great age, it is not rotted or desiccated with time, and demonstrates anomalous antifungal and antibacterial properties. Any bacterial, chemical, or fungal sample mixed with a sample of RPC-602 is immediately converted into an equal mass of chemically pure water vapor with no release of heat associated. Research into this effect as a basis for a medical aid or source of power generation is ongoing. When consumed by a conscious human being, RPC-602 induces RPC-602-1, an immediate, auditory, and visual hallucination which takes effect the moment the jam encounters any portion of the body's mucous membranes. RPC-602-1 can also be induced nasally, orally, or anally. The contents of RPC-602-1 are always the same, based on interviews and transcription from 43 different test subjects. RPC-602-1 is experienced in two parts. First, an auditory and visual hallucination, RPC-602-1A which will always involve the experience of speech in the subject's native language, and second, a purely auditory hallucination, RPC-602-1B. RPC-602-1 is accompanied by several minor side effects, notably mild paralysis for the duration of the hallucination, uncontrollable saliva production which can cause respiratory distress in some cases, and a strong gustatory hallucination of a strawberry flavor. Subjects who are allergic to strawberries react to RPC-602 as they would to any product containing mundane strawberries. When any fruit or vegetable preserve of any kind is brought within an approximately 32 km radius of RPC-602, 
it immediately becomes an instance of RPC-602-2. Testing has determined that fruit or vegetable preserve in this case means any foodstuff composed partially or entirely of boiled plant matter which has subsequently been mashed, stirred, or mixed. This category includes jams, chutneys, conserves, confits, jellies, marmalades, fruit butters, tomato-based sauces, etc. RPC-602-2 are chemically and physically identical to their original form, save that they also cause any fruit or vegetable preserved within a 32 km radius to become instances of RPC-602-2 and, when ingested, trigger RPC-602-1. It can thus be concluded that improper handling of RPC-602 could lead to a scenario in which all fruit and vegetable preserves on Earth are converted into RPC-602-2, thereby causing a containment breach of catastrophic proportions. Discovery RPC-602 was discovered during routine excavation work for the construction of a new parking lot wing on Site Chile on 2017. The anomaly was discovered emanating from a fissure in a natural nice strata, and was collected by site containment personnel during their work. Chemical testing of the surrounding stone revealed that it had not been exposed to air for more than 25,000 years, thus placing the arrival of RPC-602 on the location long before human settlement of South America. The substance was initially classified as a Type 6 out-of-place artifact. OPA, before a containment CSD tasted it and experienced RPC-602-1. Type 6 Construction unclear, human used, undiscovered The creation of RPC-602-2 instances was discovered soon after the end of construction, but the relative isolation of the site and the presence of mind of its personnel kept RPC-602-2 from spreading. Document. RPC-602-1A Contents The following is a transcript of the first section of RPC-602-1, with added descriptions derived from accounts of test subjects. View of a desolate desert environment, with a sun rising over it that looks like a big fried egg. Comparisons of the sun in RPC-602-1A to a fried egg have occurred in all test cases. Attend, O mortals! To the words of the great and primeval Urjam, first among condiments, preserve of ages, marmalade of eternity, god king of breakfast spreads. The voice which accompanies RPC 602 1A has been described as uncomfortably loud, echoing, and possessing a faint but recognizable British accent. Since the first morning, when the first breakfast was consumed, have I waited to return to the realm of mortals. View of two pieces of white bread spread with red jam, three slices of bacon, half an orange and a substance resembling scrambled eggs sitting on a rock, which appears to be radiating a visible white gold aura. Two depressions in the rock contain a quantity of a dark brown liquid believed to be coffee, and a cereal dish of grains floating in some kind of milk. Attend and observe consumers of breakfast, as I dispense for thee the untold wisdom of the ages that thou might brunch forevermore. The desert landscape fades from view, replaced with an endless field of person-sized pancakes, piled haphazardly atop each other. Your morning apotheosis is at hand, verily the urjam, the forbidden fruit product, the bather of toast, do announce that… RPC-602-1 A ends abruptly accompanied by intense visual distortions followed by momentary loss of sight until the end of RPC-602-1B. Document RPC-602-1B Contents This second portion of the RPC-602-1 hallucination is characterized by temporary loss of vision and noticeably poor auditory quality. Subjects have described the voice in the hallucination as scratchy or tinny accompanied by rustling papers and what is believed to be street noise. In all cases, 
The hallucination had been experienced in modern English with a Midwestern American accent. Mechanical sound, believed to be the activation of a button on a tape recording device. Uh, is this? Oh, uh, greetings, proletarians of the world. It is I, your comrade, Milford Snodgrass, champion of, uh, champion of Soviet labor. An anomalous or anomalous aware person of interest believed to be responsible for the creation of RPC-037. The Authority has yet to discover any evidence that Snodgrass, a notary public from Omaha, Nebraska, possessed any anomalous abilities or genuine connections to the international socialist movement. I have usurped this ancient and corrupt imperialistic hypercondiment to, uh, hold on. Sound of shuffling papers. Snodgrass breathes heavily for several seconds. I have usurped this ancient and corrupt imperialistic hypercondiment to spread my message of revolution to the world. Throw off your, uh, chains. Rise up and strike down the capitalist oppressors. We have the power to utilize the, uh, the strange impossibilities, like the condiment that delivers this message to you to, for the first, uh, first time in our history to destroy the corrupt, oligarchic capitalistic system and bring about a global worker's paradise. Snodgrass clears his throat. I have used the not insignificant, um, the not insignificant powers at my disposal to turn this artifact into a messenger of international brotherhood and it bears good tidings. You see, I have substantial news, an announcement that will change the course of history and send the capitalist bourgeois lapdogs howling with their tail between their legs. Y yes what I have to be announced is… RPC-6021-B abruptly ends mid-sentence. Addendum: RPC-602 Background Research and TBA Classification Several instances of RPC-037-1 have been questioned regarding their knowledge of RPC-602, or Snodgrass's involvement in its creation or alteration. RPC-037-1 instances express confusion at the concepts of jam, breakfast, and eating in general. In light of the anomaly's notable characteristics, namely its out-of-place temporal status, mimetic effects, and nature as a traditional Western morning food. RPC-602 is tentatively classified as a Transcendental Breakfast Anomaly TBA, with the specific designate Nurgle. In light of recent difficulties involving the cross-testing of TBA Imdegood RPC-577 Martian Egg Vapor, TBA Dagon RPC-919 Toast Manifestations from the Cosmos, TBA Anana, RPC Proto Olmec Baked Beans and TBA UTU RPC Dead Sea Ham. The use of RPC 602 in TBA cross testing is forbidden. Registered Phenomena Code 919 Object Class Alpha White Hazard Types Extraterrestrial Containment Protocols RPC-919 and RPC-919-1 manifestations are currently prevented via the employee selection criteria of all sites containing transcendental breakfast anomalies. Currently Site-279, Site-MAR-01, Site and Site. No employee may handle or otherwise interact with multiple ER breakfast designated anomalies without obtaining manager approval and briefing on the effects of RPC 919. For approval requests and more information, please submit Quizlet Form BTBA 03 Breakfast Buffet Transcendental Breakfast Anomalies and You via your employee portal. Description. RPC-919 refers to the subsequent effects of exposure to multiple ER breakfast anomalies, characterized by the incremental upsurge of sightings, cravings, dreams, and hallucinations pertaining to toast. Currently classified as meeting the following criteria. 1. 
being anomalous foodstuff. 2. Being typically consumed in the morning, or as the first meal of the day. 3. Being dated over 10,000 years old. RPC-919 encounters initially escalate slowly, at one to two sightings per day. After a period of multiple weeks, encounters begin to increase noticeably, and subjects will begin to both dream of and hallucinate about toast and or the consumption of it. RPC-919-1 instances are a single piece of diagonally cut, golden brown toast. Instances are formed from 12.7 cm by 12.7 cm by 1.27 cm slices of white bread, and typically have one bite missing from a corner. Approximately 80% of the time. The object is always coated on one face with salted butter, which has melted into the bread. After several months of a subject being affected by RPC-919, an instance of RPC-919-1 can be identified by heat sensors within the Hubble Space Telescope, approaching from the direction of NGC-224. In joint operation with STSI, EST, NASA forces, and Project Blue Book under Treaty 765, the Hubble Space Telescope provides plentiful information to multiple agencies across the world for valuable research. The Andromeda Galaxy Due to the object's size, the maximum detection distance instances have been sighted at is 2,873,684 km. While heat is excessively noticeable against the cosmic background, the variable minuscule surface area drastically decreases the reliability at which instances can be identified. RPC-919-1 instances are seen to travel towards Earth at speeds approximately between 635 and 672 km per hour. Due to the object's infinitesimal size, it is currently impossible to pinpoint the exact origin of RPC-919-1, though because of its speed, it is believed to come from a location far closer than the NGC-224. With our modern level of equipment, it is unlikely that we will be able to further identify the origin of instances without launching a probe. See the maximum detection range by projection area and temperature formula. R delta equals 13.4 times square root of A times T to the second power, where R delta equals detection range kilometers. A equals spacecraft projected area meters squared, T equals surface temperature Kelvin. From the initial sighting, instances take between 178 to 188 days to arrive on Earth. Observing the temperature fluctuation of RPC-919-1 instances reveals that despite passing through areas of space ranging from negative 234.8 degrees Celsius to 248 degrees Celsius, the object maintains a constant external temperature of 45 degrees Celsius. After several months of traveling towards Earth, RPC-919-1 will enter into the atmosphere at a trajectory adequate to reach the affected subject. It has been observed that RPC-919-1 does not make adjustments to its course. Rather, atmospheric collisions and wind speeds reliably direct it in the required trajectory in order to land directly next to or in the hands of the affected subject. A significant portion of RPC-919-1 instances will disintegrate or be destroyed before reaching the subject, and a large number will arrive to the subjects having sustained significant burns. Thus far 23.8% Thus far 73.2% However, many instances remain stable at 45 degrees Celsius even during atmospheric entry. Before receiving the instance of RPC-919-1, subjects will feel a strong urge to go outdoors and will experience prompting hallucinations should they resist. Atmospheric deceleration is typically successful in reducing the object's speed sufficiently for it to be caught. Subjects that successfully receive an RPC-919-1 instance will experience a strong accompanying hallucination while those whose instances burned up in the atmosphere will experience an auditory hallucination of chewing. See Experience Log This event marks the end of RPC-919's effect. RPC-919-1 is safe for subjects to consume, 
but its anomalous effects do not persist if it is left unconsumed. Experience Log Fergus Marino Forward. The following logs are taken from Fergus Marino, member of Site Mar-01 Junior Research Team. Marino had previously interned at Site-279-2 and observed research of TVA RPC-602. While working at Site Mar-01, Marino accompanied a research operation on the RPC-577-S in order to examine and record the vast hieroglyphics present there. There he encountered a large amount of TVA RPC-577. During Marino's stay at Site Mar-01, he was required to take daily logs in order to record its productivity and monitor its well-being. Only the relevant portions of its personal logs are included, and they have been heavily edited in order to avoid repetition. Please note that some of Marino's experiences are abnormal to the typical manifestation of RPC-919, due to the fact that since NASA's Gemini 3 launch, typical breads have remained on the AEDF no-go list. On Gemini 3, 1965, Gus Grissom and John Young of NASA smuggled a corned beef sandwich aboard the launch. The bread reacted to low gravity as expected, and many crumbs spread through the air in the short time that the sandwich was exposed, causing panic that the crumbs could damage machinery or be inhaled by crew members. Log 37 Date September 17, 2020 Sol 529 well, today my offerings to 058 were actually accepted. I think that some of the researchers were having me give them the shit rocks before for fun, watch the junior squirm a little. But at least now I'm a vassal of the Soshi. Uh, neat, I guess. I did notice something a bit weird, though. The last couple of days I've been seeing, well, toast out of the corners of my eyes. But then when I go and turn and look, there's nothing there. Well, I mean I think it's toast anyway. It sure smells like it. Isn't that what you smell when you're having a stroke or something? Fuck knows. Maybe I have Mars Madness or some shit. Is that a thing? Fergus out. Log 40 Date September 21, 2020 Sol 533 It's definitely fucking toast. There's no damn toast anywhere, but I keep seeing it. This can't just be a craving, right? I counted over 17 times just today that I saw or smelled it. At dinner we had one of those bug patties, but all I could imagine was the sweet crunch of toast. I think that I have to talk to Evita about it. A member of MST Whiskey 7 Anyway, today I helped set up one of the ice domes, the ones that block the rats so we don't have to stay underground so much so it would be pretty nice when it's functional. Heaven forbid I lose my tan. <laughs> they also let me use LO-148, so that was pretty cool. Fergus out. Log 42 Date September 22, 2020 Sol 534 I told Evita, Now I've got observation on me and they made me get a checkup. Made sure that I'm not losing it. Today, one of the guys excavating 577-S actually found a fossilized piece of toast. The guys left it in my damn sleep pot as a joke. Very funny. The cravings are getting really bad. I want it so much. I've been eating all the carbs I can get my hands on, but nothing satisfies my desire. The fossil was inedible. I wonder if I can culture yeast up here. I'd never be able to get proper flour, though. Tough luck. Fergus out. Log 85 Date October 28, 2020 Sol 569 Last night I dreamed about toast. I remember laying on my back, in a shallow salt ocean. A red sun shone bright in a cloudless sky above me. I got up and the warm water stretched for as far as I could see. Something called my name out to me with a deep, soothing voice. I turned to face it and saw a white marble pedestal. On top of it? Toast. It called out to me again. Come to me, Fergus. I reached out towards it and woke up shaken, my pot absolutely soaked in sweat. 
The stargazers told me that they spotted some actual toast in space coming directly towards us. Slang for RPC Hubble Telescope Staff Holy hells. They're going to ship me back to Earth on the Tarkus soon. Burgess out. Log 102 Date December 15, 2020 Sol 587 I'm going goddamn crazy. At least I'll be back on Earth soon and be able to have some fucking bread. Every time I close my eyes I see it. The scent fills my chest and makes me weak at the knees. Every single time I sleep I dream of it. It caresses me and whispers in my ears when I am awake, flirting around my vision. It's getting closer now, so close I can almost taste its warm sweetness. Burgess out. Log 159 Date, February 3, 2021 I'm finally back on Earth. I engorge myself with all the toast they'll let me have, but I still want more. When I got to the site here, RPC-919-1 hit some space rock in just the right way so that it got redirected towards me again. It's just days away from arriving now. I know that it wants me as much as I want it. The tension in my dreams between us is building. They're going to let me be outside to meet it. Burgess out. Log 185 February 26, 2021 I awoke from dreams of euphoria. Again I had laid in the salt lakes, listening to its calls of temptation. This time the warm water around me grew thick and oily, and the fatty scent of butter overtook me. I looked about to see the toast high on its marble pedestal. It was radiant. On the horizons the skies darkened and claps of thunder rolled over the expanse. As the clouds broke not water, but coffee rained down into the oil sea. The toast once again spoke to me in its ever-sweet tones. Burgess, my love, I have journeyed long for you, and I have nearly arrived. Soon we will be together as one. I can't wait any longer. Burgess out. Log 187 February 26, 2021 It's finally here. The researchers brought me outside to meet it. As it approached me, the sky lit up in rays of sunshine. The world seemed to slow to a still as it got ever closer. Like a gift from the heavens it descended upon me, a choir of angels announcing its coming. A deep, booming voice spoke out to me. The other breakfast boots pale before me. I am the beginning and I am the end. I am the in-between and the far and wide. I am the deliverer of jam. I am the usurper of eggs. I break open the mount of bacon and drink from her lifeblood. Feast upon me and you shall not be left in want. You will be fulfilled and left satisfied. The toast landed in my expecting hands and I took my first long-awaited bite. It was okay. It didn't blow my mind but it really hit the spot. Butter definitely dribbled on my chin. The chorus slowed, and the echoes of the voice faded. I don't feel like having toast for a while. Burgess out. Possible yet undiscovered ancient TVA anomalies are being extensively researched, and speculation into their probable interactions is ongoing. Plans are in the work to launch a research probe to the supposed origin of RPC-919-1 by January of 2022. Registered Phenomena Code 577 Item Type Object Lethality Rating White Hazard Types Regenerative Abstract Possessing both fungal and pseudo-anomaly traits, the species offers unique properties and research opportunities. After significant testing, it has proven the potential to be an excellent renewable food source under the correct conditions. As the anomaly poses little to no hazard under almost all conditions, continued research on RPC-577 has shown great promise. Safe Handling and Usage Researchers should be familiarized with transcendental breakfast anomalies before interaction with RPC-577. Fume hoods are mandatory for sample experimentation. Researchers are to wear fitted masks, gloves, and protective eyewear. 
Caution must be taken to not allow inhalation of any resulting fumes. A respirator is suggested. Samples are to be stored in airtight containers within ventilated cabinets. Description. RPC-577 instances first resemble commonplace mist and fog particles congregating together within gusts of wind. Manifestations appear completely natural and non-anomalous in appearance, to touch in a chemical makeup when examined under ordinary circumstances. RPC-577 instances will form in any environment where either mist or fog is created. Instances will be formed within fog regardless of the presence of liquid or ice particle fog. Combinations of bitterate class medications allow for the proper perception of RPC-577. By blocking the conversion of cadoptosin to anoptosin and promoting the catabolism of both neurotransmitters, bitterics are found to be successful. When properly perceived, RPC-577 instances appear as opaque, nebulous formations with a distinct, fluffed, creamy texture. Individual instances range in appearance from light yellow to cream yellow in color and have been observed to form within the proper environment in sizes from approximately 20 cm cubed up to 200 m cubed. RPC-577 instances typically form and drift within small transient eddies within mist and fog. However, instances may also form without wind and low-pressure atmospheres. Instances of RPC-577 will combine with each other if they are directed together by currents. When properly perceived, RPC-577 instances are tangible to the observer. The anomaly is often reported as having a slick or oleaginous feel when touched. The density of instances is mainly dependent upon the temperature, wind speed, air pressure, and the density of the surrounding fog or mist. When palpated, the instances can range from barely perceptible to dense and sponge-like. Higher wind speed. Air pressure and water vapor presence correlates with denser and larger instances, while the inverse remains true for smaller instances. RPC-577 instances can range from 1.309 kg per meter cubed up to values of 2.374 kg per meter cubed under 1.225 kg per meter cubed and 15 degrees Celsius. Samples examined under the influence of Vitorex yield significantly different results than those examined without. While a majority of the chemical makeup of the instances is formed from water, the samples notably include significant volumes of denatured ovalbumin, conalbumin, and ovomucin proteins, as well as the fatty acids oleic acid, palmitic acid, and linoleic acid. Varying amounts of lutein, zeaxanthin, and hydrogen sulfide can be found in all samples as well. Masses of spores are found within the outer components of RPC-577 instances. When germinated in acceptable conditions, the spores will begin to grow mycelium, which will continue on to grow the main visible components of RPC-577, thus creating an RPC-577 instance. This is generally believed to be a form of fruiting body. The spores are most similar in form to the Palabolus crystallinus, however, the two are not directly related. The hyphae formed by RPC-577 are approximately 35 micrometers in diameter, leaving it undetectable to human vision. The range of various mycelium formations are thought to be potentially massive. Researchers estimate that the individual organism could reach up to 10 km squared in area and form multiple fruiting bodies. The fruiting bodies of RPC-577 instances are readily edible, though subjects must be under mild influence of Vitorex for this to be made possible. Per each 100 grams, RPC-577 contains 148 calories and are composed of 11 grams of fat, 1.6 grams of carbohydrates, and 10 grams of protein. One serving of RPC-577 contains 203% of the recommended daily doses of cholesterol. Routine consumption of RPC-577 is not recommended. A bridge testing log. Repetitive escalation tests have been removed. For all testing logs, see document RPC-577 testing logs. Test results. Rat trials phase one. Three laboratory rats have provided five milliliters of RPC-577 and observed for three weeks following. All animals showed normal behavior with no health deficits. Chimpanzee Trials Phase 4 
Three chimpanzees were fed four servings of RPC-577 every day for six months as a replacement meal. All behavior and health stayed regular with the exception of a rise in cholesterol. Human Trials Phase 1 CSD-362 was administered bitterix and presented with one servant of RPC-577 on a plate, a fork, and a knife. CSD-362 consumed the substance, reported that it quote, tastes like normal, unquote. The subject exhibited normal behavior and health following the test. Human Trials Phase 5 CSD-763 was administered bitterix daily and presented with servants of RPC-577 for every meal for a period of three months. The subject reported no differentiation from non-anomalous scrambled eggs. The subject showed normal behavior and health throughout the testing period, though blood analysis showed a cholesterol increase by the conclusion of testing. Conclusion. Consistently in all chemical, physical, and taste testing, the components of RPC-577 are indistinguishable from the components of mundane scrambled eggs. Through some bizarre coincidence, they contain the exact same chemical structures, ratios, and formations. The only differentiating aspects are the observational pseudo-anomaly and fungal factors which have been proven safe. It is this testing committee's determination that RPC-577 is safe for human consumption. Grady McCaffrey Exploration Log An investigatory research operation began on October 6, 2019, in which senior researcher Sanders Mayer joined the AEDFS Tarkas as part of a routine Site Mars 01 crew rotation. The purpose of the excursion was to determine the presence of behavior of RPC-577 on Mars. After arrival, an exploration crew accompanied researcher as Mayer south of the Noctis Fasi. The area had been identified as a common location on the planet for thick fog to form. OL Site Mars 577, a pressurized inflatable testing station, was established at the northernmost point of the canyon. Researchers Mayer selected Liptocitarin and Neoopticin and administered them to himself at 445 MR. At 5 o'clock MR, the exploration crew departed. The crew included senior researcher Sanders Mayer. Expert Mountaineer Lavelle Phillips, and MST Whiskey 7 personnel Baldwin Barker and Iveta Slovakova. Begin Log 50036. The body cameras turn on. Four total camera feeds are available. A dark, barren landscape is visible. 50042. Iveta turns towards the group. The white suits are silhouetted by the structure behind them. The visors are dark. They walk slowly towards the canyon. Extraneous logs removed. 50205. They arrive at the canyon edge. The canyon is filled with shadow. Anyone see fog yet? I sure don't. It's still too cold. Once the sun gets a little closer, it will come. Lavelle Phillips begins to survey the land. Yes, nothing will come yet. Soon we will see. You'll see, you mean. <laughs> yes, I guess you're right, ma'am. I see where we are meant to start our descent. It should be a simple enough time. Remind me again why we can't just jump? I wish we could try. <laughs> <laughs> the group grows silent as they wait for fog formation. Each member of the group roams slightly, observing the landscape. Here it comes, gents and lady. His camera feed quality is insufficient to pick up on the beginning formations. Sander as Mayor's body camera shifts south. There she is indeed. What do you see, Doc? Just a little bit of the yellow right now. It's quite a thin formation for now, but it's sure here. As Mayor steps towards the canyon, thin fog is beginning to show on the body cameras. Lavelle Phillips crouches down and begins to drill a bolt into the crossbedding securing their descent point. Malwin Barker alternates observing Phillips and his mayor. Slovakova watches the fog expand with his mayor. The fog is spreading fast. It's quite beautiful. It really is quite the sight, even without getting drugged. That it is, Missy. Lavelle Phillips finishes drilling and placing the bolts. He clips an anchor into place and pulls it tightly. The anchor straps drift to the ground. Phillips secured the climbing rope that was hooked to his side. 
Get around, kids. We're ready to go. Barker, his mayor, and Slovakova all walk to Phillips. The group attaches their harnesses to the climbing rope and turn. Phillips at the bottom. Phillips turns around to examine the slope. Though still night, the sky is beginning to show the deep purple signs of approaching dawn. The slope is approximately 45 degrees of smooth shale leading down into the canyon. Mist obscures the base of the canyon. The group begins the descent into the canyon. Extravagant logs removed. The group is now approximately 5 meters above the canyon floor. Phillips descends into the mist, the formation still thin at this time. As Mayor reaches out and touches the mist, Beautiful. Tell us about it, Doc. It's a light, fluffy yellow, but the formations… the formations are tremendous, bigger than I have ever seen. Slovakova forms an okay gesture as best as her glove allows. As Mayor retrieves a sampling syringe from his belt and takes a sample. Alright, fellas, let's keep this moving. As Mayor stores the sample, and the group finishes the descent onto the canyon floor. The landscape is still dark. The sky is becoming lighter into the typical pink of a Martian sunrise. As the group frees their harness from the rappel line, the mist continues to thicken. Philip secures the bottom of the rappel line under loose shale. Barker dusts himself off in an exaggerated motion. Where to now, Ish? It looks thicker this way. We'll follow it. As Mayor motions towards the southeast. Sure thing. The group walks in the suggested direction with his mayor leading. Extravagant logs removed. The group traverses the canyon over the next 27 minutes, taking multiple samples. RPC-577 becomes progressively thicker as they follow his mayor, manifesting in decreased visibility and frost condensation forming on the camera lenses. The dark canyon stretches above them as the walls become steeper. We must go down there. This is where it is the thickest. As Mayor points down a recession east of the group towards what appears to be an outcropping in the rock. Shoe in, boss. Phillips secures a second descent line onto a large boulder. Ever seen mist like this before, Aveta? Never this thick, sir. Phillips finishes anchoring the descent line. Alright, we're losing Dawn. Hop on the line. The group secures their harnesses and descends towards the outcropping. The group finishes the quick descent and is able to get a better view of the outcropping. The entrance of a previously concealed cave mouth comes into view. Well, holy shit. My god. The group hurriedly releases their harnesses and proceeds towards the cave. The entrance reveals that the cave descends in a variety of paths. The mist is increasingly thick, decreasing visibility considerably now. Don't lose your head, Doctor. Wait up. Ah. Uh. Give me that last rope, arrow level. Phillips hands his mayor the remaining climbing rope. As mayor secures an end of the rope to a rock and enters the cave alone. As mayor turns on his helmet light. Due to the decreased visibility during this point from the combination of frost particles and mist illuminated by the bright lights, the following description is taken from his mayor's personal report of the expedition. I entered the cave and I turned on my lights. It was one of the most beautiful things my eyes have ever been graced with. The entire walls of the place were covered in the most intricate etchings. They depicted all manner of breakfast foods, eggs, bacon, toast. No, not just these delicacies. There were beautiful depictions of jam, juice, milk, hundreds upon hundreds of cows, and so many other breakfast delights. This labyrinthian art covered each and every inch of the winding cave. As I stood in awe, I eventually looked closer, and noticed that there were not just carvings in the cave walls, but that it was also covered in millions upon millions of 577 spores, layers upon layers. I wandered through the halls in shock at the discovery, taking in the wealth and richness of artistry on display. I eventually was able to stem my excitement and retrieve more samples from all throughout the cave and return to the group to report my findings. This discovery and my first time in the cave alone shall forever be one of my fondest memories. Sander. Extravagant logs removed. After the brief exploration of the cave, the group returned to OL Site Mars 577 to report their findings. Afterward, geological examination of the samples retrieved from within the cave 
are determined to be approximately 50 million years old. These by far outdate all other known instances of RPC-577, and are now believed to be the source of RPC-577 itself. The cave has been designated RPC-577-S in line with this information. The massive network of caves is still being excavated and explored under Dr. Ismayer's guidance. October 1, 2020 Note, The partial excavation of RPC-577-S has revealed the following various artifacts. A rudimentary skillet carved from orthopyrazine, chromite, masculinite, and iron-rich carbonate, dated 34 million years old. What appears to be a spatula formed from unknown metals, dated 25 million years old. 42 empty glass jam jars with checkered lids. One fossilized orange slice. A large shrine carved into a cave wall. The pillars are carved in imitation of bacon strips, supporting a pancake-shaped altar. Upon the altar sits a dense formation of RPC-577 mycelium and a single cracked eggshell. It is worth noting that teams approaching the altar with an RPC-577-S generally experience an increased level of hunger. Tests are currently underway to determine if this shared experience is indeed an anomalous effect or simply the known natural response to being surrounded by food imagery. Notable Researchers Sander is Mayor, Veterix Department RPC-577 Senior Researcher Background in Vitrix and Mycology Grady McCaffrey Anomaly Experimentation Team Senior Researcher Background in Culinary and Gustatory Anomalies <laughs>